this week on Road to Pikes Peak, we are actually going to be corner weighting the Tesla Model 3 in its stock form and start taking some of the interior out to be able to get the weights. We're going to use a Proform scale that is a wireless setup and this is rated for 7,000 pounds total vehicle weight. If uh, you have a vehicle that is in the 6,000 pound range, it's very helpful. For us, it just means that there's a bit of headroom into how we do some of the testing. If we wanted to, say, load the car full of people and a bunch of other equipment, we have some room to see how that affects corner weights, but we're not gonna get into that today. The main thing is that we're gonna go ahead and get the car onto the scales. To do so, I've got all of the scales connected and zeroed out, which is very important because you want to make sure that your weights are starting at zero. And we've got them in their appropriate corners. Each of the scales are color coded and also uh, they're marked RR for right rear, front right, front left, and rear left. So you've got your markings for each of the corners to know what your weights are. But let's go ahead and get this thing on the scales and see what it weighs. We've got the interior put all the way back in, including our rear deck cover i guess it does have the subwoofer in the back here this is a 2018 tesla model 3 performance and it has the black interior it has full self-driving upgraded hardware it does have the 20 inch wheels with almost brand new tires and brake pads and uh, since this isn't a vehicle that has fuel in it we don't have to worry about if it's full or empty when we're doing our corner weights but i'm going to go ahead and get this thing on the scales typically and by the way interior is all back in i'm going to go ahead and put the rear seat back up because we actually are trying to get as close to the corner weight of what the car would be with the interior in. So having the majority of the items closed helps put the weight where it should be. And these don't close all the way because I was kind of quick about how I put everything back together. So we're gonna go ahead and get the scales here, put them in their appropriate positions. And again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it on one direction, and then we're actually going to go ahead and pull the car out, turn it around, and put it back in that direction. Once we've driven on, I'm gonna mark where those scales were. So that what I'll do is I'll flip the scales, right rear, it's gonna go front left, front left, it's gonna go right rear, and vice versa, so we're gonna X pattern it. So that way we can use whatever incline there is and then average the weights and get our, a proper weight. That'll give us kind of a a setting of how things change. All right, we're gonna go ahead and back into position here. So we're now firmly on the scales. I'm gonna do a little rock here so they settle in. Sometimes you'll drive forward and aft depending on how you're setting it up on a scale. But here we go. So 4189, let's go ahead and do the next steps here. All right, so I'm gonna use a piece of tape here to mark the locations. So we just did our corner weights with the car facing south, and we're gonna turn around and have the car face north. That way we can take the average of the cross weights as well as the weights just to offset anything for the ground not being perfectly balanced, um, or should I say level. However, once we've done that average, then I can at least use the calculation to be able to go ahead and figure out as we remove items to get a close approximity of what exactly taking the interior pieces out and make a difference. So let's talk a little bit about when we switched them around. So Total weight facing north is 41.85. And we'll pay attention to our front left weight of 11.40. It was 11.46 facing south. The right rear when facing south was 110. And now it's 115. So you can see how there's basically about a five pound discrepancy that's being balance between the two. So if we cut that in half, obviously it's about two and a half pounds where if, if it was perfectly level, your front left should be about 1043. Your front right would be about 1040. Left rear 
would be about 1002. We're gonna analyze these numbers when we're back in the office, but right now I wanna to get to giving some of the weight out. So here's the embarrassing part. Now you get to figure out how much I weigh, and maybe I could lose a little weight before Pikes Peak too. All right, so we already had the weight without me. Now, we're adding me in. I'm gonna give everything a little shake. And this is where it'd be really great to have somebody else here with me. Because I can't be over there and here at the same time. So I didn't plan that out very well. Uh, I guess I plan ahead only when I'm behind the wheel of the car. I don't know, maybe it's one of those things. All right, so we're gonna find out how much I weigh. This time, I actually have the laptop already set up in there. So that way I can get the weight when I'm in there. So right now we're at 41.92. And I'm jumping in. 4,375 pounds, so we have no roll cage in here yet. We have no safety equipment. We just have a full interior car, so we need to actually get the weight out, and that way when the safety equipment goes in and the aftermarket parts, our goal is to be at least 100 to 200 pounds lighter than the factory car. We're gonna have to see how that turns out. Right. One of the first things a lot of people will do when they have a car they're gonna take to an autocross or to a drag strip is gonna be to remove the rear seat of the car. So I'm gonna do that right now and then get the, the weight before and after. Right now our weight is at 41.89 with approximately, I guess I would say 51, 51.8% 51 on the front. So as we remove the rear seat, we're gonna expect the rear end to get lighter. And I'm guessing it's probably gonna weigh about 60 pounds. We're about to find out. Now to make it faster, these are all just placed in here. So <laughs> pretty easy to go ahead and Put all this right here. Okay, so I think we're at 41.89, if my memory serves me, with 51.8% up front before. Now we're at 52.3% is up front. Weight is 41.33, so I believe that's 56 pounds from 41.89. However, there's still floor mats in here, which you have to take out when you do a truck. So I'm gonna take the floor mounts out, as well as the uh, the rear, uh, what, kind of decorative cover, parcel cover, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so floor mats are out. Floor mats are out, and the rear cubby cover's out. And now our weight is at 4127. 4127, so now we're 60, what, 62 pounds lighter? Just within something that if you had the proper tools, you could do it under five minutes. So nice, it's about a third of my weight gone, if not a little bit more than a third of my weight. So what's next? Well, the next thing we gotta work on is the frunk. All right, so we've done back seat, floor mats removed, that silly cover in the back to hide that cubby. And we're about to take the frunk out so that we can see you can save some front weight. So. Let's get started on it. So the weight without the frunk is 4112, but the computer's in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to pull the computer back out real quick. And it's 4109 with 52%, 52.13 up front, 47.8 in the rear. So again, I think we started with 4189 and now we're at 4109, which that's not too bad. 80 pounds can be taken out of the car in under 30 minutes pretty easily with your average tool. So that's a good amount of weight savings. I'm sure that when we get to wheels, tires, and some other items, we're gonna be saving more weight. So I get to actually explain to you guys a little bit of the setup. So what I have here is my MacBook that I am using Parallels, the Windows emulation software that actually allows you to parallel full Windows software, which most of these type of equipment that's out there is going to be using uh, windows based software because it's a little bit less expensive to develop and so right now we've got our setup with the macbook that's an adapter that comes with the proform to be able to hook it to your usb connection we're running it on windows so we use the parallels program to be able to uh, use this just like we did with graphing the information from the CAN system. But the one thing left to do, we've saved 80 pounds so far, we're gonna remove these rear door panels. 
and see if we can get ourselves 100 pounds total saved. So there's just a few bolts to undo that are underneath the cubby here and here, and then you pull it off. So I've already done that to speed things up, and it's just kind of hanging here. So there's one of them off, and the other one off. We are now at 40.94. We have like five more pounds we've got to find. So we've saved about 90 pounds. Our front weight is 52.2%. I am gonna save this to a file. All right, so now I'm in the car with no floor mats, no frunk, no rear seat, no rear parcel cover, no rear door panels, and the weight with me in it is 42.71. There's still more weight to remove, which is gonna be exciting. Front is 52.2 and the rear is 47.8. So it's been a beautiful day here at Electric Performance. We have been able to not only get weight out of the vehicle, but also document to be able to help everybody understand what some of these parts weigh and also how that affects the weight of the car as to where that weight is actually located. One of the things that we're gonna be doing in upcoming episodes is gonna to be to actually get the vehicle wrapped, so I'm very excited about that. And for those who have supported the program by getting your name on the car, thank you very much. I'm excited to get those on. And of course, you can go to Blake Fuller, my Patreon page, to be able to support the craziness that we're doing. It's actually because of your support that we were able to afford the scales that we used. And of course, we're gonna be buying more tools to share more information with all of you. Again, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching Electric Performance. Please subscribe, share, and hit the like button.